The reality that I was headed to Alaska was finally settling in as Mike and I flew over endless mountain ranges on our way to Anchorage. After landing, we had to scratch the itch and stop at a local Anchorage hotspot to see some new birds. Westchester Lagoon was our spot. My first trip lifer was one I expected in short order, the short-billed gull, formerly known as Mew Gull, and there was a whole breeding colony on this island in the lagoon. According to allaboutbirds.org, short-billed gulls are the only white-headed gull species that regularly nests in trees. I must say it is an odd sight to see a gull perched in a tree. Second on the lifer list for the trip was Arctic Tern, another species that was expected and numerous. Several were swooping around the gull colony, zipping so fast that photos and videos were difficult to say the least. Other species seen at Westchester Lagoon included redneck grebes, green wing teal, and at the end of our trip, when we stopped here a second time on the way to the airport, a flock of Hudsonian godwits was loafing in the shallows, preening and resting after the long journey to Alaska from the Patagonia region of southern South America. We were now on our way south, headed toward Homer, way at the western end of the Kenai Peninsula. On our way, just south of Anchorage, the highway passes by a well-known birding hotspot called Potter's Marsh. Here we saw more nesting short-billed gulls at close range and great for photo opportunities. We also saw more arctic terns, doing as I described before, darting quickly back and forth and, I guess you could say, turning on a dime. I had learned a thing or two from my last experience and had a bit more success filming them this time. Now watch as our viewing situation improved dramatically. Right here on the sign, man. I couldn't have asked for better as this arctic tern, totally ignoring us as we looked on, landed on the refuge sign nonetheless and began preening itself from a mere 10 to 15 feet away. Mike and I both stood there mesmerized by the moment and took in our fill of this special birding gift on our first day and only second stop in Alaska. Beyond just birds, the scenery had become very dramatic as well. As we drove along the shoreline of Cook Inlet, mountains towered all around us, highlighting the beautiful blue waters. We stopped periodically to take in the scenery, like here at Turn Lake. A distant common loon graced these waters as a bonus to the beauty. Some stops were more dramatic than others, or shall we say, dramatic in different ways. Hard braking and U-turns made our hearts thump for sure, but the sight of birds such as our first harlequin ducks of the trip swimming in the rapids of the Russian River made them worthwhile. This was my first time seeing the beautifully plumaged breeding male. As we neared Homer, Mike had planned a stop in Anchor Point to visit the Starisky Tern Colony where the uncommon Aleutian Tern had bred in past years. And it didn't disappoint. While footage was nearly impossible for a few moments, we did see them swoop and dive while calling directly overhead, giving us quite a show. Here's the distant footage I did manage. Notice as I slow the footage down that it has a white forehead 
which separates the species from the more common arctic tern. Even if it feels at times like these highways are long and lonely, there's usually some wildlife to keep you company. These moose signs were a reminder of this fact and a call to keep our first moose encounter from being our last. Lo and behold, the sign rang true as this stretch of highway produced our first roadside moose of the trip. Located on the west end of the Kenai Peninsula, Homer is a fishing village where Kachemek Bay flows into Cook Inlet. The long spit of land extending into the bay that you see here is one big marina, with commercial and charter fishing boats dominating the scenery. In particular, Homer is famous for its halibut fishing. On the way into town at an overlook, some odd rocks in the water caught our attention. They didn't disappear when waves came. Upon closer inspection, we realized we were actually looking at our first sea otters of the trip. And laying on the rocks nearby were our first harbor seals of the trip as well. Finally in Homer, we ventured directly out to the southern tip of the long spit where we glassed the water for seabirds flying by. Species seen included marbled merlet, pelagic cormorant, this pigeon guillemot, and more. The nearby colony of black-legged kittiwakes nesting on the pier kept things interesting and very loud. To round things off, we also saw glaucous winged gulls and several northwestern crows foraging in the rocks on the shore. Unfortunately, just as I added this species as a tick on my life list, it would be taken away by taxonomic changes that lumped it with the American crow. Last but not least, wherever we went, bald eagles were ever present. Seeing so many eagles, it became tough to not start treating them with less respect than they actually deserve. What a beautiful way to end the day. As we headed back to our campsite on the beach and the long midnight sun slowly melted into the horizon, it was hard to settle our minds from all the excitement of the day. But considering that midnight in Alaska is 4 a.m. back at home, it was time for some shut-eye and to block the light out with blinds over our eyes and get some sleep. One thing's for sure, I was hooked on birding in Alaska. The next morning started off right where we ended the night before, as there were some exciting birds right at our campsite. There was a flock of very camouflaged surf birds hidden in the rocks at the shoreline. A Pacific loon sitting out on the water mixed in with a flock of common myrrh, as well as fly by harlequin ducks and surf scoters. After a return trip to the tip of the spit, we decided to move on and check some other birding sites in the area, such as the Beluga Lake wetlands, where we found Canada jays orange crown warblers, ruby crown kinglets, Wilson snipes, and more. But a highlight was watching both Lincolns and Savannah Sparrows sing up close for great views. To top it all off, we also saw another moose. As we headed north out of Homer, we stopped along the shores of Cook Inlet, first at Anchor Point. The tide was out, so we had to traverse the wet, 
rocky, sandy inlet bottom for quite a ways before reaching the shoreline. Flying over the water were many harlequin ducks, both red-breasted and common mergansers, short-billed gulls, and even a surprise flyby of two Aleutian terns. Feeding on the mudflats were several species of shorebirds, including lesser and greater yellowlegs and least sandpiper. Along with the semi-palmated plover and western sandpipers you see here. I, along with these eagles, were fascinated to watch a fishing boat get launched at low tide. The boat had to be hauled out from the parking area by this tractor-like vehicle that then dropped them off in the water. It seemed as if the vehicle would get swamped as the boat was released, but they knew what they were doing, and it made it back out of the water safely. Back at the parking area, I was treated to this up-close view of a fox sparrow singing its sweet song. Our final stop along the shores of Cook Inlet was the town of Ninilchik. The lack of sleep was catching up to Mike, so he took a nap in the car while I scoured the landscape for birds. An amazing 30 bald eagles were seen spread out on the shoreline. These juveniles were getting their fill of fish. The adult nearby seemed to be there to help keep the peace and prevent the kids from, shall we say, fighting over dinner. The numerous eagles of Cook Inlet were an impressive sight and a unique Alaska birding experience. I found some enjoyment in watching this Bonaparte's gull take a bath in the creek. There were also several shorebirds, including this semi-palmated plover, feeding next to two dowitchers. Turns out, this was the best look I'd ever had at both long-billed and short-billed dowagers feeding right next to each other. You can see the fatter, rounder-shaped long-billed dowager on the left and the slimmer, flat-backed, short-billed dowager on the right. It looks as if the long-billed dowager has swallowed an egg, giving it a hunched-back appearance. It was now time to head to our next major destination, Seward. Our first 24 hours in Alaska had been fulfilling on many levels, including the dramatic scenery, but also the amazing birding opportunities. I must admit that, unsurprisingly, I had already fallen in love with Alaska. Stay tuned for part two, where we visit Seward and Kenai Fjords National Park. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notifications button to know when the next video is released.